a case study of coastal management that we studied was the Overstrand Coast in Norfolk. Overstrand is located on the Norfolk coast, which is on the east coast of the United Kingdom. It's near Cromer. The geology of Overstrand is very distinct. The cliffs are made of a very soft rock called boulder clay. This was deposited here during the past glacial period and it's very, very easily eroded. Some of the distinctive features of Overstrand, well, it's got natural uh, physical features like beaches. It's got the steep cliffs made of boulder clay. And a human feature of Overstrand is the village. The village has got a population of just over a thousand people, but it does receive several thousand tourists each year. And there is a hotel, yeah, a hotel there as well as a caravan park and several holiday homes. It used to be a small fishing village, and it was also known as the village of millionaires in the 19th century. So there's several large houses there still today. The boulder clay is a very significant part of the landscape because these boulder clay cliffs, if left alone, would erode at one to two meters a year. And actually five miles north of Overstrand, at a place called Haysborough, the cliffs have got no coastal management, no sea defenses, and they are eroding rapidly. And people have had to evacuate their homes because of the rapidly eroding cliffs. Along each, of the, each stretch of the coast in the UK, the local councils will form a coastline management policy. This is known as a shoreline management plan. Due to the need to protect the town of Overstrand and its tourism, the current policy here is to hold the line. In contrast, north of Overstrand, a place called Haysborough, where there's fewer buildings, less tourism, the policy is managed retreat. So this means that they're allowing the coast to erode back in a controlled way, um, but they're not doing any more repairs to that coast. South of Overstrand at Bacton, in contrast, they're doing advance the line. They're using beach nourishment to actually build up the beach to advance the coast back into the sea. And this is being done to protect the gas processing terminal there, which is obviously a very expensive part of infrastructure. How are they holding the line at Overstrand? Well, there's several coastal defences. There are groins. These cost around £100,000 per groin. They're made of hardwoods. And they do last for about 30 years. And what happens is the sand that would otherwise be transported along the coast by longshore drift is trapped against the groin. And therefore, this keeps the sand in place and the sand acts as a natural coastal defence, as well as being a lot of fun and attracting tourists. There is also a large seawall, a curved seawall. These cost a very large amount of money. It's around £10,000 per metre of coast that you're trying to protect. And they do need regular maintenance, particularly after, say, a storm. Up on top of the, uh, on top of the seawall, they place rock cages called gabions. These are designed to support that boulder clay cliff to prevent it from slumping when it gets really wet. Each cage costs just £50, so they're relatively cheap. But they do rust quickly, and so they don't look very nice and they don't last very long. So overall, why are they holding the line at Overstrand? Well, clearly there's infrastructure and the houses and the tourism that needs protecting, but to come to that decision, they have to do a cost-benefit analysis. So in summary, Overstrand, it's estimated that the uh, cost of maintaining those existing coastal defences over their lifespan is around £18 million. However, if Overstrand was just left to erode, the cost would be around £50 million due to the cost of rehousing all those people whose homes would be lost, as well as the lost tourism money. So as such, despite that high cost of holding the line and those expensive coastal defences at present, it makes economic sense. In the future, the worry is climate change is going to make sea level rise continue to happen and that will speed up coastal erosion. And that, that could mean that in the future, the costs of holding the line become too high and so the policy might have to change.